Hello, this is Naohiro from Fujitsu. I'm going to talk about deploying OpenHPC cross-platform cluster by using the tool we developed. So let's get started. My presentation consists of three parts. First part is introduction and background about OpenHPC, Arch64 server, and the tool we developed. Second part explains the problem of single platform cluster when we try to introduce Arch64 server to existing x86 cluster, and the solution we propose cross platform cluster with demo. We may call single platform cluster homogeneous cluster, and also call cross platform cluster heterogeneous cluster, but we only deal with two CPUs, x86 and R64, so I use the word single and cross. The third part is closing and recap. Target audience is those who are interested in deploying R64 computer node in OpenHPC. Skill level is entry. And uh, I'm going to try to use abbreviation as little as possible. If I use it, I try to make comment on it. The goal is that attendees can deploy OpenHPC cross-platform cluster using a QNU. That is SMS, System Management Server, x86 manages both computer node x86 and R64. I listed all of the commands in text file and uploaded it into my GitHub. The following URL shows you all of the exact command without any omission for your reproducibility. So you can look up it any time. I summarized OpenHPC in one slide. In my understanding, OpenHPC is a collection of HPC open source software package, so as not to conflict each other. There are many, many HPC libraries and tools. Some of the components can be compiled in different ways by combining of compiler and MPI runtime. MPI runtime can be either Open MPI4, Intel MPI, MVPH2, or MPI-CH. Compiler can be either GNU9, Intel compiler, or ARM compiler. For example, boot C++ C library here. The first block and the second block are x86 packages, and the third block and the fourth block are R64 package. And the first block is compiled by GNU9 with those for MPI runtime. The second block compiled by Intel compiler with those for MPI runtime package. The third block compiled GNU9 with those two MPI package. The fourth block is compiled by ARM compiler with two MPI runtime. And uh, resource management can be chosen one of three, SLAM or OpenPBS or PMIX. Provisioning management can be chosen uh, either Warwolf or XCAP. And OS is supported uh, either Saint OS 8.2 or OpenSUSE Leap 15.2. In this talk, I took a combination of Saint OS 8.2 and Warwolf and SLAM, and I use GNU9 and OpenMPI 4 for, for demo. The current status in terms of R64 server, bad news is that R64 server is still expensive and not yet popular as opposed to smartphone. And good news is that R64 HPC won top 500 the other three titles for two consecutive times, June and November this year. This fact proves that R64 is capable for HPC 
in terms of the performance and the power consumption. Interestingly, RAID 8.1 Arc 64 is running on this system, Fugaku powered by A64 FX SOC. So, Arc 64 server is standardized by ARM, server based system architecture, SDSA specification. Open HPC Wiki resource page introduces cross platform provisioning assembly for our work, such that allows creation and assembly of R64 images on existing x86 hosts using containers. The hyperlink point to the repository cross SMS R64 shell we maintain. Uh, basically, what is this tool for? Uh, this is a tool that is implemented as a Docker container to deploy OpenHPC cross-platform cluster by enabling to execute R64 binary on x86 machine. So in this session, I call it SMS R64.shell for short. OpenHPC install guide written for each CPU architecture so if we follow the guide exactly, typical OpenHPC single platform cluster is deployed, such as this page. In this case, admin must manage two clusters. That means two database, two user accounts, two set of setting files, and etc. etc. SMS R64 kind of redundant. What if we virtualize SMS R64 into SMS x86 physical server. Certainly, one physical server decreased, but admin still must manage two clusters, no unification. So this is not the cluster we want. If SMS x86 manages both computer node x86 and computer node R64, Everything is integrated into SMS x86, so no duplicated administration, so unified JV, unified user account, unified set of setting files. So this is the ideal case. This is a cross, cross platform class that we want. So uh, how do we do that? The answer is relatively simple, just two steps. Uh, first step is uh, set up SMS x86. Then second step, set up SMS R64 environment on x86 machine. In step two, we make use of R64 dot shell. That is cross platform provisioning assembly for our work. OpenHPC webpage provides install guide for combination of each CPU architecture and OS and provisioning software and resource management software. Here is a copy of the OpenHPC webpage. The install guide listed by combination of the provisioning software and resource management software. So we use the version of CentOS 8.2 and uh, Warwolf and uh, SLAM combination. In step one, set up SMS x86 first by following the install guide x86 CentOS 8.2 install guide with uh, Warwolf and uh, SLAM. No adjustment is necessary to the step described in the install guide. This picture shows just after step one has been done. In the step two, we use SMS R64.shell container and set up SMS R64 environment on SMS x86. So we need some adjustment to the steps described in R64 version of the install guide. This picture shows just after step two has been done. Yellow box shows SMS 
Arc 64 looks at a container is created in SMS x86. Step 1 has seven tasks. I go through all of them one by one. The first task is user's account distribution setup by Warwolf. This picture shows just after install OpenHPC basic component on SMS x86. MySQLD, DHCPD, TFTPD, HTTPD, SRAM ControlD, MoonGD, and NFSD are running, and PD Shell, SSH are ready to use. Cluster user account is managed as OS user and distributed via Warwolf WWSH file command, which distributes ETC password, group, and shadow. The second step of step one is user's home directory distribution setup by NFS. Create cluster user home on local disk on SMS x86 in this case and export it to computer node x86 by NFS. The third task of step one is DOS base operating system creation by Warwolf. Base operating system is minimum set of sent OS 8.2 and the source of bootstrap and VM, VFNS, virtual node file system. Base operating system x86 is created by WWMK change root command with DOS x86 root pass and the open HPC packages are added by YAM command with VOS x86 root pass. All packages are pulled from repository x86 in the internet. The fourth path of step one is bootstrap image, assemble and distribute setup Warwolf. Bootstrap x86 contains PXE kernel and initramfs, and it is created by wwbootstrap command with dos x86 root path. The fifth, fifth task of step one is VNFS virtual node file system image assembly and distribution by Warwolf. VNFS x86 contains final OS RAM boot image and it is created by WWVFNS command with DOS x86 root path. The sixth task of step one is development tool installation and distribution setup by NFS. Development tool x86 are uh, collections of library and tools, and they are installed by yum command into SMS x86 slash opt slash ohpc slash path and export it to cn x86 as slash opt slash ohpc slash path by NFS. The last task of step one is computer node x86 boot. SMS x86 issues IPMI boot command to computer node x86. Then computer node x86 initiates IPX e boot. Step two is almost identical with step one. The first and second tasks are common with step one. We don't need these two tasks if users are same between x86 and r64. So let's go through the rest of five tasks one by one. The third task of step two 
is VOS, Virtual Penetrating System Creation by Wowl, using SMS R62 .check container. Notice that we installed Docker into SMS x86. Base operating system Arch64 needs to be created in SMS Arch64 container, that is yellow box, by WWMK change root command with VOS Arch64 root pass, and open HPC packages are acted by YAM command with VOS Arch64 root pass. All packages are pulled from repository at 64 in the internet. The fourth task of step two is bootstrap image assemble and distribution setup by Wawu. Bootstrap at 64 contains PXE kernel and Inicram FS, and it is created by WW bootstrap command with VOS R64 root pass on SMS x86, but not R64, SMS R64 .check container. The fifth pass task of step two is VFNS virtual node file system image assembly and distribution by Wawur. VFNS R64 contains final OS RAM boot image. And it is created by WWVFNS command with VOS R64 root pass on SMS x86, but not in SMS R64 .check container. The sixth task of step two is development tool installation and distribution setup by NFS using SMS R64 container. Notice that we need to use SMS R64 .shell again in batch shell mode but not interactive shell mode this time. Development tool R64 are a collection of libraries and tools and they are installed by YAM command into SMS x86 slash opt ohpc hyphen r64 slash opt ohpc path by preventing slash opt ohpc hyphen r64 so as not to override development tool x86. The path is exposed to computer node r64 as slash opt slash OHPC slash path by NFS. The last task of step two is computer node R64 boot. SMS x86 issue IPMI boot command to computer node R64, then computer node R64 initiate IPX boot. Now, let's dig into technical details of step two, set up SMS R64 environment task. In terms of SMS R64 environment, I will show you how to execute R64 binary on x86 manually, automatically, and without change root. Then, how to share container host file system with this. In terms of computer node R64 boot, I will show you how to make VOS, base operating system, and bootstrap, and VFNS virtual node file system. Then how to boot computer node x86 and R64 using QME. Finally, I will show you how to manage job for x86 and R64. How to execute R64 binary on x86 manually? 
The answer is QM user static. Arch command shows we are uh, we are on x86 platform right now. And the PWC command shows we are in base operating system root directory. And the file command shows VLS is dynamically linked R64 binary. In order to dynamically link R64 LS command, we need to invoke change root with QM user static like this. QM user static is user space interpreter for R64 binary. The static binary is convenient uh, because it is portable. We can copy it anywhere without worrying about VLL and VLL path. Next, how can we execute R64 binary automatically? The answer is dformat misc. The dformat misc is a kernel function and a kind of a shebang extension. Defining the magic number of R64 binary in dformat misc copy file and restart uh, systemd dformat. Then QMU R64 static binary automatically invocation is enabled. And we can run R64 binary on x86 as if it were x86 binary. Next, how can we execute R64 binary without change root? The answer is Docker container. The R64, a QM R64 static is added into container by defining Docker file like this. Container host and guest are sharing the same kernel, so bformat misc setting is effective in container guest too. And SMS R64 Docker container can be used as either interactive shell or batch shell. Typing just SMS R64 dot shell returns interactive shell prompt. So notice prompt is changed. Typing SMS R64 with R64 binary runs as batch shell mode. Next, how can we share container host file system with this? The answer is docker minus D volume option. SMS R64 invokes docker with minus V option like this. Then R64 base operating system image can be accessed from both host and guest through shared volume. Next, how can we create R64 DOS base operating system? Here, 3.6.1 is the section number of R64 OpenHPC install guide. The answer is to type wwmk change root command in SMS R64 .shell container. Here, first type SMS R64 .shell, then notice that prompt is changed, and then set BOS root path to the shared volume, and uh, copy QM R64 static to BOS. And then execute WWMK changer, which create R64 BOS in the shared volume. Next, how can we assemble R64 bootstrap image? The answer is to type WW bootstrap command to SMS x86 shell prompt. Notice that we are not in SMS R64 shell, but in SMS container host. WW bootstrap with BOS path assembles R64 bootstrap image, but the attribute of the image become x86. So uh, currently, wwbootstrap command doesn't take minus a architecture parameter. So we need to update to r64 by wwshell 
Bring the up to six to nine. Next, how can we assemble doing NFS image virtual node file system R64? The answer is to type www.dfns command to SMS x86 container host. Notice that we are not in SMS R64 shell, but SMS container host. WWVFNS with BOS path assemblies R64 VFNS image. But attribute of image become x86. Currently, WWVFNS also doesn't take minus a architecture parameter, so we need to upgrade to R64 by WWS shell VFNS set command. Next, how can we boot computer node using QM? QM parameter is very complicated and difficult. So this is just for your reference. In physical machine environment, we issue IPMI boot command from SMS to boot computer node. The PFLASH is OVFM UEFI firmware. So see the slide later. Pointers to outline resource page. The last, how can we manage job for each platform? The answer is to define partition for x86 and arch64 in slam.com file. SINF command shows all partition. SCAR denotes default partition. We can specify partition to SLAN command with minus P parameter like this. If no minus P parameter, default parameter is chosen implicitly. Now I'm going to show you SMS R64.shell demo. As I explained, SMS R64.shell has two use cases. The first case is to create BOS base operating system R64 in interactive shell mode. Second case is to install development tool R64 in batch shell mode. BOS R64 creation. Container host SMS is x86. See shared volume is empty on SMS and create a file in shared volume and check a file is created. Start SMS R64 in interactive shell mode. Notice that prompt has been changed and the CPU architecture become R64. And uh, see if the file is there in shared volume, just recreate it. Set CH loop to BOS root pass. Create user D in BOS. Copy QM user static to BOS user D to execute R64 binary. Start MK change root with BOS root path, then start installation. One hundred ninety-one package has been installed with uh, no error. Check BOS root path. Image has been installed. Check VLS is R64 binary. Exit container. Set R64 CH root to the BOS root path. And BOS image can be seen from SMS. And check MS command is R64 binary. Development tool installation. We are going to install 
Arch64 GNU9 compiler. SMS host is Arch64 uh, x86. And uh, Arch64 GNU9 compiler is not installed on SMS. Start SMS Arch64 in patch mode, specifying the YAM command as an argument. Installation started. And now C compiler is installed on SMS x86. And C, the GCC binary is Arch64. Now I'm going to demonstrate cross platform cluster. Here is a demo environment. SMS x86 has four CPU. 32 gigabyte memory and two Ethernet, one to internet, the other is to cluster network. N1 and N2 are computer node x86. Both are running as QMU virtual server, which has four CPU and eight gigabyte. So computer node x86 has total eight CPUs. And C1 and C2 are computer node R64. Both are running as QM virtual server, which has four CPUs and eight gigabyte memory. So computer node Arch64 also has total eight CPUs. SMS and CN, computer node. SMS is x86 and uh, WWCN node list shows all of computer nodes C1, C2, N1, N2, and SE4 command shows all of partition. There are two partitions. X86, 64 has computer node N1, N2. R64 partition has C1, C2. And uh, I switch the terminal to N1 and N2. And uh, the RAM boot OS image almost can take 3.9 gigabyte. And uh, uh, both nodes marking the development tool pass and home, home directory. And uh, CPU is x86, and uh, number of CPU is 4. And I switch the terminal to C1 and C2, and uh, run boot OS occupied 4 gigabyte, and, uh, and the development tool is mounting, mounted, and home also mounted. And the CPU architecture is at, at 64, and the number of CPU is 4. And let's start MPI job on x86. Create x86 directly, so as not to mix R64 binary. The module list shows logic component. Currently, uh, GNU9 and OpenPI4 is logic, and uh, MPICC is located in the tool directory that is uh, NFS exported. And uh, see the hard world program. The initialize MPI and communication channel and and the node and uh, set the synchronization point and the node zero print hard world and the rest of uh, them uh, print processor information and compile the hard C and check the binary a.out is x86 and uh, start parallel job in batch mode uh, uh, interactive mode specify number of processor number of the node and uh, partition x86 now prompt to change to n1 and start the parallel job and all 
eight processors are returning the answer. Exit node one and see the uh, MPI job definition file. The number of nodes is two, the number of processors is eight, then start PRAN command. So put the batch job to the x86, x86 partition. And the job number is 37. And the job 37 status is running. And now for completed. The result is uh, storing in the file. The all eight processors return the answer. Now, MPI job arch a, arch64. Create arch64 directly. And uh, login C1 to compile the hard world as arch64 binary. Check logic module, GNU9 and OpenPI4 are logic. And uh, MPICC is located in the MFS uh, tool folder. And compile Haro C. And exit out is uh, created. And check the binary is arch64. And execute parallel job as interactive shell. Specify the number of processor 8, the number of nodes 2, and the partition is arch64. And now program log in C1 node and start. PRAN and all eight processor returns the answer. Exit C1 and start batch job specifying the partition R64. Job number is 39. This status is running and, and still running. And now completed. The result is stored in the file. Then the all eight processor returns answer. Now put the uh, A dot out into the default partition. So job is 40. Still not yet completed. And the job is failed as expected because. Uh, Uh, x86 machine computer node cannot arch64 binary. So that's the reason the error is exact format error. This page shows pointers to online resources for your reference. Recap my presentation. So please remember two things. First, SMS arch64 dot shell container Help us deploy OpenHPC cross platform cluster. Second, all of the command line steps to reproduce using QMU is available on GitHub. The URL is here. And uh, I hope you try it by yourself. And if you have a problem, please report the issue to GitHub or send me an email. Thank you for your attention.